are very confident that our banking sector is uh, solid. The Fed's balance sheet is up by $297 billion. It's all a Fugazi. You know what Fugazi is? Let's see what Credit Suisse's appetite is. It's Credit Suisse taken out by UBS. The market's in seek and destroy mode. Search and destroy. Preliminary investigation that will be led out of the FBI's field office in San Francisco. This is really a strong sign that also institutions are buying. This is Bitcoin's moment. Bitcoin rising over the past week amid fears of contagion in the traditional banking system. All right, hello and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel and today, today I want to talk about this melt up that we are currently in. That is what I believe, but it does, however, identify as a banking crisis. So we're going to talk a little bit about this. I've got an outline for what is happening at the moment. It seems to me that the central bank of America, the Fed, is literally attacking all of the other small banks. I think it's deliberately going after them to try to blow them up so that it can roll out this CBDC. So I'm going to go through this template here. I'm going to show you the evidence that backs this up. So without further ado, let's get into this. We are currently living in one of the most important events ever in all of 6,000 year history of money. And that is happening right now. We are seeing Bitcoin and gold thrive whilst we are seeing the banks slowly, one by one, but surely collapse. Gold is up nearly 9% year to date priced in USD. However, it's down 36% priced in Bitcoin. So remember, as I often say on this channel, Bitcoin will continue to do Bitcoin things. Bitcoin will end up smoking every other asset. So I've prepared the short summary for you, this overview of what's been going on. Understand this. During C19, they used this crisis as an excuse to print what was at the time around 80% of all US dollars that had ever existed in just under 18 months. A lot of this freshly printed money was given to banks and they were told to buy bonds. At the time this happened, the Fed promised those banks that it would not raise rates. And just three weeks later, the Fed then embarked on what is the most aggressive hiking cycle ever seen in human history. Of course, as they hike the rates, the bonds decrease in value because the bond value is inversely proportional to the yield. So as the yields go up, the bonds go down. This led to those banks being sat on massive unrealized losses, which went largely undetected for a couple of years until recently. Recently, people started to work out what had been going on, and this sparked a lot of fear. The fear naturally causes bank runs. People rush to withdraw their money, and of course, the money does not exist. Therefore, the bank runs cause the banks to collapse. And this is what we've been seeing of late. We've been seeing these massive unrealized losses due to the bonds in combination with bank runs causing these banks to collapse. Just recently, it came out that the banks actually lost depositors' money in 2021 and they hid it in the footnotes instead of notifying their customers. They hid it in the footnotes of documents that they knew their customers and clients would never read. So now the Fed has moved to printing. It calls this not QE, but make no mistake, it's printing money and it's doing so to replace these deposits, all whilst continuing to raise rates, at least for now, which of course continues to force banks further into unrealized losses as a result of holding the bonds. And all of this before they're about to launch their Fed now, which similarly to not QE is now not a CBDC. This to me seems like a coordinated attack from the central banks on the smaller and medium banks. Remember, like I said, as a recap, they used the C19 crisis as an excuse to print money. They then gave that printed money to the banks and told them to buy bonds and promised them that they wouldn't raise rates. Then they went on the most aggressive rate hiking cycle ever. The bonds decreased in value, forcing the banks to sit on massive unrealized losses. Fear then sparks, bank runs happen and the banks are starting to blow up because of these unrealized losses. The Fed has known about this issue since 2021 and just chose not to sound the alarm or notify anyone. And as I'm about to show you, the printer is back at full speed. Absolutely monstrous amount of printing occurred in the last week and a half. Again, I'm going to show you evidence for all of this. And perhaps the biggest curiosity in all of this is this is just before they're about to launch what is not a CBDC, a central bank digital currency. So here you see the unrealized losses that these banks have been forced to sit on. 
Here you see the unrealized losses weaken a bank's future ability to meet unexpected liquidity needs, such as these bank runs. You also see that especially when interest rates change to the extent that they have changed over the past year. Again, as I said, they forced the banks to buy these bonds, promised them not to raise rates, then went on the most aggressive rate hiking cycle ever, forcing these banks to sit on massive unrealized losses. They also knew about this because the amount of insolvent banks went from just four up to 333 in a six month period. And when I said about them hiding this in the footnotes, here you can see held to maturity securities, just like pictured in the blue here, increased by just under 500%. The securities were redesignated for capital management purposes with unrealized losses totaling $132 million. Deutsche Bank could be next. You can see here the credit default swaps. This is the insurance against banks defaulting on their loan obligations up and to the right has spiked massively. Is Deutsche Bank going to be the next domino to fall? Remember I said it's QE, but it's not QE. Well, what do they call it? They call it Bank Term Facility Program, BTFP. Make no mistake, they are printing money and loaning it out in order to try to bail these banks out. But as with any printing, the moment the printer gets going, liquidity flows into risk assets. And as you can see here, this is the Fed balance sheet. They added another 90 billion this week. This means that almost 70% of the entire quantitative tightening process has been reversed in just a week and a half. Here it is again. You can see we went from a peak of 8.97 trillion down to a trough of 8.34 trillion. A week later, we were at 8.64 trillion, and now we sit at just 0.25 trillion below the prior all-time high. The printer is back, and it is sped up to full force. This is not going to roll over in the near term. This is only going to accelerate to the upside. The main reason for this is they are trying to debase the currency towards zero to force people into poverty, and therefore they will have no choice other than to accept the not CBDC, that is the Fed Now program. But asset holders and the lucky few watching this channel that understand balance sheet expansion, that understand Bitcoin, there is a chance to not only preserve your wealth, but to vastly increase it in the near term. Historically speaking, the Fed balance sheet expansion has only been bullish for stock markets and has only been bullish for Bitcoin. And I'm not saying this will happen like this, nor am I suggesting Venezuela and America should be used in comparison. But just keep in mind, this is what it looks like when a central bank loses control of its balance sheet. This is the stock market in Venezuela following such events. And so similarly as not QE, as I mentioned, we also have now not a CBDC, a central bank digital currency. However, as Balaji points out here, the central bank digital control is a much more appropriate name for this. FedNow is highly centralizing. It's an instant payment system where every payment goes through a Fed controlled server and must comply with applicable controls. The roadmap is to support not just peer to peer payments, but also consumer to government and government to consumer, which means automatic debiting from your account and automatic stimulus. In other words, even more direct government control over your bank account. The same Fed that set interest rates at zero and then to the moon, the same Fed that killed five of its own banks and looks to be continuing to hunt down more banks, only to then blame their deaths on everything other than their own policies. In July, that Fed will soon have the visibility and the power to monkey with your bank account directly to freeze or drain your funds at will with applicable controls and consumer to government payments rather than being impeded by the current antiquated banking tech stack. So yes, Fed now technically isn't a central bank digital currency. There isn't a blockchain or equivalent where you can see the on-chain flow of every digital dollar. However, it is what people feared the most when they talk about a CBDC. It's central bank digital control. Even if it's not central bank digital currency, it is a major step towards rolling out a full CBDC. You could think of FedNow as a little bit like a virus that has evolved to evade recognition by changing its sequence without really changing its function. People were immunized against the term central bank digital currency, but not all forms of increased central bank digital control. And the Fed now is certainly the latter. So I ask you, is it a coincidence? The Fed uses this playbook to start to put massive pressure on the banks, forcing them to sit on unrealized losses before then opting into what they call not QE, but is without a doubt a massive amount of QE just months away before they launch their not CBDC. Given the rate of balance sheet expansion, Jordan here asks the perfect question. How long before the Fed stops releasing updates on their balance sheet? We are literally running out of time to opt out of this system and Bitcoin, physical gold and physical silver are the only options. We are very confident that our banking sector is uh, solid. The Fed's balance sheet is up by 297 
$1.5 billion. It's all a Fugazi. You know what a Fugazi is? Dude, did you hear the news? All right, let's see what Credit Suisse's appetite is. It's Credit Suisse taken out by UBS. The market's in seek and destroy mode. Search and destroy. Preliminary investigation that will be led out of the FBI's field office in San Francisco. I think it's really a strong sign that also institutions are buying. This is Bitcoin's moment. Bitcoin rising over the past week amid fears of contagion in the traditional banking system. 